now, deep in the British jungle. JBW. Hello there. This is a quick video for those of you wishing to train yourselves in the megalithic craft. And thereafter, should you find success in that pursuit, perhaps going on to found your own civilizations. Oh. Well, you only live once. It should be noted that there is a severe lack of megalithic masters with which the contemporary novice may serve an apprenticeship. However, all the materials and resources available to those ancients are available to us today. Likewise, there are tried and tested lines along which you may progress towards mastery of that craft. I will outline those here so that you may use them to innovate your own methodology. When you first walk out of the primeval forest, you may find yourself a nice cave or an overhang of rock under which you might find shelter. Therein, chances are, you will light yourself a fire against that rock. You will find that the effects of that fire discolour the surface, often turning it a red or yellow to a certain depth. You may then take yourself a piece of flint or some such and scrape off that discoloured stone, revealing the natural colour of the stone beneath, creating yourself a nice two-tone image. Through that process, you can begin to train yourself in those fundamental effects of the discoloration of the stone and the softening of that surface. Therein, learning the principal techniques of working stone with fire. Once you have familiarised yourself with the two-dimensional or pictorial arts of working stone with fire, you may want to break into the 3D world. Traditionally speaking, you may begin with a standing stone or, more interesting, a Logan or balancing boulder. Of course, there are erratic balancing boulders left from erosion and the last ice age. If you find an erratic boulder, it's a good way to begin. Working your fire around the underside of that boulder, you can take away any uh, excess stone and create yourself a nice balance. Through that exploration, you can begin unlocking the principal physics of the megalithic uh, craft and how to balance those colossal masses. Once you've created yourself a few balancing boulders or standing stones, men here's you may want to call them, you will have learnt the fundamentals of quarrying stone with fire and therein built yourself up your basic toolkit. Also, through that, that exercise, you will have defined which stone types in your area are suitable for working with this methodology. Once that process has been completed, you may wish to progress on to a form seen right around the globe in many variations. That is what is called the Dolman Stone. A large headstone with the grain running horizontally, the feet or legs with the grain running vertically. The advantage of that form is obviously that you may need some earth banks to begin with. You can get your fire underneath that main boulder and therein have the room to work. The grain running horizontally in that headstone means that should it crack, it will generally crack along its length and not fall in on you. Also, you can then work away the, uh, the stone of these legs and get them as fine as possible to enhance the impact of the structure. I'd advise you to begin fairly lightweight, maybe don't go above 10 or 15 tons on that top stone. Through that, again, you can begin to an advance 
your understanding of the great balance of things and really refine your quarrying methodology. Another interesting point about this structure in its many forms is that should you um, light a fire within it, the thermal mass of the stone will retain that heat for a long time and will, uh, you will therefore be able to heat yourself through the night through the, the heat trapped in that stone. could even be used as an oven in some instances. It's all there waiting to be unlocked and explored once again on your route to founding your own civilization. Through the pursuits that have been outlined so far, creating your dolmens, and balancing boulders, menhirs and so on and so forth, you should have begun to establish a group with which you can work. Traditionally speaking, as you've seen in ancient Egypt, the next stage is generally to create a stone circle. The stone circle being the archetypal symbol of group allegiance. As is seen here in the British Isles, you may wish um, each group with which the allegiance is formed to take stone from their own area, therein building into that circle the practical realities of that cohesion. Through that pursuit, you should begin to found your own cultural identity and a nation can be formed on the economy arising therein. As your population grows, you will begin to specialise more and more within the different uh, parties within your group, therein accelerating your advancement. You will, at some point, come to the stage of wishing to draw the sword from the stone. Again, take care for the weaponization of those arts can again create rupture and a great deal of death and destruction further down the line. It's worth noting that you will, at some point along that path, have the possibility of casting um, yourself in the image of a god. Take a little care in that pursuit as it can cause division within the group. Likewise, the usage of slaves in the construction of pyramids can also act to undermine the group cohesion. It's always best to try and get uh, those who you wish to work with you to work voluntarily and therein you have a better chance of maintaining a stable core to your civilization and culture. We won't go into pyramids and all that business now, it's, it gets a bit complicated. But yeah, your dormants, that's a lovely way of going about it. That's, that's how my old man taught me. Masculinity. Plastic. Letter. Social media collusion.